This video will define the moment of inertia tensor for molecules. So continuing on from the previous video on center of mass, we've defined the zeroth and first moments of mass. So we can define now the second moment of mass, which is called the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia is a rank two tensor, or what we would also call a matrix. In this case, it's in three dimensions, so it's going to be a three by three matrix or a three by three tensor. All right, and the moment of inertia, that being the second moment here, defines the resistance to torque or resistance to angular acceleration. So total mass defines the resistance to linear acceleration or force. Uh, this is for angular acceleration or torque. All right, so we're going to have a tensor, as I said, a rank two tensor or a matrix. So this moment of inertia tensor, I, is going to have components Ixx, Ixy, xz, you can probably guess the rest, yx, yy, yz, zx, zy, and zz. Okay, so what are the values of these individual entries here? So for the diagonal entries, ixx, we have a sum from i equals 1 up to n atoms of the mass of atom i times its y coordinate squared plus its z coordinate squared. Now to get the other diagonal elements we're going to do cyclic permutations of the xyz indices similarly to how we did it for cross products. So for yy we have the same sum masses z, y goes to z, z goes to x. So z coordinate squared plus x coordinate squared. And for the zz, as we can probably guess, z goes to x, x coordinate squared, x goes to y, y coordinate squared. All right, those are the diagonal entries. Then we need the off diagonal values as well. So we have i, x, y is equal to i, y, x. This is going to be symmetric, so any exchange of indices are going to be equal. Ix equals xy, zx equals xz, zy equals yz, etc. And that is going to be equal to minus, do note the minus, sum over all the atoms, mass of that atom x times its x coordinate times its y coordinate. So that's fairly suggestive as well for the rest of these for xz and for yz since that is symmetric as I said these are the same as zy and zx which is minus some x coordinate z coordinate minus some x coordinate or sorry y coordinate z coordinate Okay, so now we've defined all of those values there. Um, the units for this, if we use the units we've been using all along in this chapter, are going to be AMU angstrom squared. So the mass is an atomic mass unit, just like you'd read off of a periodic table. And typically for XYZ coordinates, the convention I'm using is to use angstroms. So if you have angstroms times angstroms, you get angstrom squared. And then you have some, a, a sum of things that are AMU angstrom squared. Okay, so we'll note that this is again a symmetric real three by three matrix. If you were in two dimensional space, it would be symmetric real two by two matrix, but we are in three dimensions typically for molecular coordinates. Okay, so let's do a demo for this case. So if we look on Python, I've got the molecule propane here. It's got its three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. 
So we're going to calculate the moment of inertia for this particular molecule here. And it will change based off of whatever reference frame it's in. Okay, so if we go to my web browser into Jupyter, I have the program that we've been adding to in this chapter, uh, same functions from center of mass as before. Uh, new stuff, I've got a dictionary for defining Cartesian indices, that just makes things a little bit simpler for me. Uh, note that arrays in Python, like in many programming languages, if I have n elements, like three elements in this case, they start from zero and they go up to, to n minus one. So I have zero, one, two there, which is gonna be helpful for some functions I have below. Okay, same functions thus far. Now I have a function for printing the moment of inertia, which we'll see at the end. Um, a function for comparing if two values are the same or not within a specified uh, cutoff threshold. I believe that's gonna be used in the next video. Not sure if that's necessarily needed yet here. Okay, translate coordinates, same, same. And the function for getting the moment of inertia, here is those atomic mass times coordinate squared plus coordinate squared for the diagonal elements, the off diagonal elements, mass times x or y coordinate or whatever it is, etc. Okay, scrolling down. Now I've got this a little bit more uh, split up. So after I translate my geometry to the center of mass, I have my center of mass uh, translated geometry. Then I'm gonna use that to calculate the moment of inertia and I'm going to print that value. So in this case for propane, I've already executed this command doing shift enter. So this is the output of this command using the moment of inertia program. Coordinates that we just looked at before for, pro for the propane in Avogadro. All right, initial geometry, 10 bonds, 18 bond angles, 18 torsions, 36 out of plane angles, uh, very much not zero this time. Center of mass a little bit away from the origin, but pretty close, translated to the center of mass. You can compare between there and there to see the differences. Then we have our moment of inertia tensor in AMU angstrom squared. Notice we have a little bit that's off diagonal, but for the most part, this is fairly diagonal already. Okay, so that is our moment of inertia tensor, and we'll look at how this defines uh, principal moments and how we can use it to eliminate redundant rotation coordinates in the next video.